Hi guys! A few months ago, we made a video about the Ofero Laser 1 engraver. In this video, we will assemble and test the new Ofero Laser 2. So, you want to know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui, and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, here we have the new Laser 2 engraver from Ofero. Let's start by checking what's inside the box. Inside, we can find a few certificates and the user manual. Next, the protection goggles, the focus calibration tool, the USB cable, the cable to connect the laser module, and the bag with tools and materials to test the laser. This is the laser module. The Y-axis moves on a couple of profiles, and this is one of them. This is the power supply, here we have the second profile for the Y-axis. This is the back profile. And this is the front profile. And finally, the X-axis. Ok, so this is everything that came inside the box. The engraver's power supply is this one. It's a 24V and 2 amp model. This is the laser module. But there are actually three laser modules you can choose from. On their website, they have the LU2-2, which is a laser designed for engraving since it has an output power between 1 and 1.6 watts. Then they have the LU2-4-SF, which stands for short focus. This module has an output power of 5.5 watts and it's good for both engraving and cutting. And they also have the LU2-4-LF, which stands for long focus. It's possible to engrave with this laser module, but it's more dedicated for cutting. This module has an output power of 5.5 watts and includes a nozzle for air assist. The model we have is the second one that can engrave and cut. The laser has this long red heatsink, and at the top is the fan and the small board. At the bottom is the shield secured by four small magnets. At the side we have a sticker with all the information about this laser module. Since the laser is a fixed focus model, they included this plastic piece. This will be used to adjust the laser to the correct height so that the laser is at the correct focus. In the bag we can find many things, such as a brush, a laser dot focus tool, some wooden and acrylic materials to test the laser, zip ties, several washers, nuts and screws, a wrench, and an allen key. And this is the front profile. This one includes the main board here at the left. On it we have the power connector, the USB connector, the offline controller connector, the reset and the power buttons. The board is equipped with a 32-bit microcontroller and 4988 stepper drivers. This is the X-axis profile. The stepper motor is located at the left. And the carriage has a slide-in system to easily attach the laser module. And these are the two Y-axis profiles. The X and also the Y-axis profiles have millimetric scales on them. Both axes run on mini wheels. And before starting with the assembly, we recommend to check and adjust the wheel's grip. On each carriage, there are eccentric nuts that need to be turned to adjust the grip. We have a video that explains in detail how to adjust, so check the video description for the link. Ok. Now for the assembly. Start by placing the left and right Y-axis profiles on the table like this. This is the back profile and will be attached back there. 
and this is the front profile and will be attached here. For this tab, you need all these screws. Start with the back profile and secure it at the side with the shorter screw, and then the longer screw. Do the same for the other side. Now the front profile. At the right side, start with the short screw and then the longer screw. At the left, start with the longer screw. Before placing the smaller screw, take the ground wire, which is the green and yellow wire with the ring terminal, and place it between the profile and the screw. Next, align the Y-axis carriages and place the X-axis profile. Start with the right side. Place a washer and then the nut. Use the wrench to tighten the nut. Do the same for the second screw. At the left side, place the first washer and nut. Place the second washer, but before placing the nut, get the cables that come from the board and place the ring terminal from the ground wire between the washer and the nut. And then tighten the nut. Next, get a couple of zip ties and secure the cable on the left Y-axis carriage. There are a couple of holes on the carriage for the zip ties to go through. Use a cutter to cut the zip ties. Next, connect the X-axis stepper motor. At the front left, connect the left Y-axis stepper motor. At the front right side, connect the right Y-axis stepper motor. For this one, pass the cable through the metal foot. Next, get the white cable. This cable will connect the laser module. Connect the cable on the left side. And then get three zip ties and secure the cable at the back of the X-axis profile. Take the laser module, remove the shield and place the adjustment screw at the back of the laser module. Slide the laser on the X-axis carriage and secure it with the adjustment screw. Next, connect the laser. The small wire with the fork terminal must be secured by the back right screw on the top cover. Use a Phillips screwdriver to unscrew it a little bit and slide the terminal. Then tighten the screw back. Careful not to over tighten this screw or you might break the plastic cover. And we are almost done. Now move all the axes around to check if any of the cables block the movements and also to check if all the axes move freely. The belt's tension can also be adjusted. For both Y-axis belts, the tension can be adjusted by turning the adjustment screw located under each carriage. For the X-axis, there is a small screw that needs to be loosened so that the idler mount can move to adjust. This engraver does not have any end stop switch, so in your software, you need to define not to home the machine. There are small rubber pads under the feet to prevent the engraver from slipping. Place back the shield and the assembly is now complete. This engraver has an engraving area of 390 by 390 millimeters. Before turning on the laser, make sure you create the laser profile first. This is to avoid the software to start the communications and command the laser to home the axis. If it does, and since this laser does not have any end stops, the motors will slam the axis against the front left corner. Having said that, 
When creating the profile for this laser, make sure you disable the Auto Home option. The Start From also needs to be defined as Current Position. This way, you move manually the laser to the position you want the job to start from. And you are now ready to turn on the engraver. Connect the power and then the USB cable between the engraver and the computer. Press the power button for a few seconds to turn the engraver on. Also because of the end stops, when you first try to move the axis, you might get an error 9 and the axis will not move. This is because the software does not know where the axes are and blocks the motors for protection. To fix this, go to the console tab and type $x and enter to unlock the axis. Ok, now let's go through the procedure to focus the laser. First, place the material that will be engraved or cut. Move the laser over the material and place the focus tool between the material and the laser. Loosen the adjustment screw and adjust the height so that the laser's shield touches the focus tool. Tighten the adjustment screw and remove the focus tool. And it's done! The laser is now at focus height. For the tests, we first tried to engrave a picture of our cat Becky. The machine can run very fast, but the max speed is actually determined by the laser power. If you increase the speed, you need to increase the laser power as well. The amount of power needed will also vary according to the material used. We then tested engraving on cork. And since this laser is powerful enough to cut wood, we tested cutting 3mm MDF wood. It's important to have a gap between the wood that is being cut and the base because of the smoke. If possible, place a fan to clear the smoke away. This way, the bottom side of the wood will not get dark from the smoke. We also did this small jigsaw puzzle. Next, we tested engraving on stone. And then we tested engraving on denim. Finally, we tested on leather. Ok, now let's check the results we got with this engraver and with the LU2-4-SF laser module. The picture engraving worked ok. It actually captured lots of details from the original image. And this is the test on cork material. We should have used a better design, but still it engraved very nicely. As for the cutting tests, it was able to cut 3mm MDF board with just a few passes. Here it's possible to see the details of the cuts. Some of the circles are very very small. If we use a scale to compare the engravings, we can see that the lines match up. As for the jigsaw puzzle, all the cuts were nicely done and all the pieces of the puzzle fit correctly. Engraving on stone is actually easier than it seems. This was the result of our first test. Not bad. Engraving on denim was harder than we were expecting. This is because we had to reduce the power enough and balance the speed to avoid damaging the fabric. The laser can easily cut or weaken this material. But when we got the settings just right, we got very good results. And this is the test on leather. It can engrave very easily, but cutting through is another story. It was not very easy to cut this material. From the test we have done, we conclude that this engraver works pretty well. This laser module is also the best choice if you want to engrave and cut. 
Nevertheless, if you want to know how the other two laser modules perform, you can check our video of the Ofero 1 laser engraver for all the details. And that's it you guys, hope you liked the video, we will see you guys next time. Bye!